So understanding the signs of scoliosis and what scoliosis means, what the actual definition of scoliosis and the categories of scoliosis is a very important thing, especially once you're, do you're diagnosed. However, if you think there's scoliosis, uh, you have it or a family member has it and you're concerned about it, so definitely understand, listen through this video and get a better understanding of what we're dealing with. So number one, scoliosis is an abnormal sideways curve of the spine. There is has to be a curvature in this, uh, from the front view and it normally has to be diagnosed 10 degrees or greater in a, something called a Cobb angle measurement. And this Cobb angle measurement is not just a curvature, there must be associated rotation of the vertebra or the spine within that Cobb angle. A lot of times patients will say, oh, yeah, my scoliosis also has a rotation in it. All scoliosis cases have rotation in it. If it didn't have rotation, it would not be scoliosis. It would be a postural deviation is what we will call it. Scoliosis, unfortunately, is progressive. It progresses rapidly uh, during childhood and it can progress slowly as an adult. And scoliosis, majority of scoliosis is uncurable, meaning there's no way to fully correct it. Um, even if we take small curves and reduce them to zero, we still believe that the, sc the scoliosis is there, okay? When we get scoliosis classifications, we look at three main classifications. However, I have some other classifications beyond the three main because of the curve sizes that I tend to see. Mild scoliosis cases are normally diagnosed between 10 and 25 degree range. The mild cases sometimes can be very difficult to see visually. You may not see a lot of things. You may not notice any kind of pain or any kind of problems. And very often these curves go undiagnosed in this stage. They don't even found, even in children. They can be missed at scoliosis checks. They can be missed at, at, uh, at pediatric evaluations. And a lot of times small curves are really just kind of blown off, which is I, not what I would recommend meaning they just say, oh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal, it's a small curve. So um, I'm not saying that's what I would recommend, but that's the way mild scoliosis is treated. Moderate scoliosis is between 25 and 40 degrees. There's a 15 degree re re window where it's called moderate scoliosis. And this is where traditional treatment tends to start to do something about it, which we'll talk about in other videos and later on, is that this moderate treatment tends to, uh, moderate scoliosis tends to have some treatment. When you start breaking 40 degrees, 40 degrees plus is where you start hitting the severe scoliosis stage. This is when curves start to become um, ready or more classified for a surgical intervention. Um, what I find interesting, uh, the end stage of mild, which is 25 degrees, and the beginning stage of severe is only 15 degrees apart, 15 degrees. And yet they do nothing. A lot of times these mild cases, they don't treat, and that's up to 25, but let 15 more degrees, and now you're you're, you're, you're classified for surgery already. And then I like to throw another category on there is something I call very severe scoliosis. And that's when you break 80 degrees or so. I do think there's a difference between curves that are less than 80 and curves that are greater than 80. And I'll talk a lot about a little bit later. But so we have uh, mild, which is 10 to 25, 25 to 40 is moderate, severe is greater than 40. And then I call very severe, it's like a fourth category that I use, which is 80 plus. So when we look at scoliosis, what are the signs that, that could be happening? First and foremost, postural change. If we see postural differences, uneven shoulders, head not centered over the body, hang, arms hanging at different lengths. We also notice bigger gapping between the arms and the body protruding shoulder blade or asymmetrical rib deformity in the back, asymmetrical ribs in the front, asymmetrical waist, right? Uneven hips, clothes kind of fitting weird that, that, can, that can show something. Um, legs that are different, like in shoes that you put, get pants and they don't fit right. Like one side seems longer than the other. That's another issue. A lot of times with scoliosis patients, we tend to see like a balance or coordination issues, sometimes changes in gait. Anything that you see that becomes asymmetrical in the body, and especially if you see it happening during growth and development, could be a sign of scoliosis. Now, sometimes it can start off relatively mild, and as uh, the patients tend to um, grow or get, and curves get bigger, it's much more visible. If you look at the spine, and sometimes you can actually see the spine curve, that's definitely a sign of scoliosis. So when we look at all the uh, effects, a lot of them tend to be physical, but there's also another thing and that's pain. Now, when it comes to pain and scoliosis, it could be very different between children and adults. 
adult patients almost always will have pain at some point in their life as a result of the curvature because what's causing the curve to progress during adult stage is gravity actually pushing down, which can be painful. However, adolescents almost never have pain resulting from scoliosis because they're growing and they're elongating and the curve that's hard, the, the progression is happening because they're growing. So a lot of patients say, well, you know, the, the child had no pain, so I didn't think there was anything wrong, even though the shoulders were unlevel and the curve and the, the ribs looked weird, but they had no pain, so I didn't do anything. We don't expect kids to have pain as a result of scoliosis. So don't wait till your child has pain before you evaluate it. If you're seeing some of these other things, get it evaluated sooner. The sooner you evaluate it, the smaller the curve, the better treatment can be performed, especially if you're looking at treatment that wants to avoid surgery. So if you suspect it, you're seeing scoliosis and you're suspecting it, where do you go? Well, first of all, as a parent or as a caregiver or as a friend or a family member of somebody with scoliosis, you can definitely identify posture changes. If you identify posture changes, I would recommend taking them to a trained professional to be evaluated like a doctor or um, either a medical doctor, a pediatric doctor, or even a chiropractor. School nurses do some do do scoliosis checks. However, it's inconsistent on what scoliosis checks are being done across the country. Every state has their own way of doing it. And a lot of times, remember, scoliosis only shows up during growth. So if, yeah, if they do the check, let's say in sixth grade, and then your son or daughter starts to grow in seventh grade, they'll miss it. They'll just totally miss it. And it's not like they're gonna check them again. They normally do one check. So you have to be looking at your son or daughter to make sure that the curve, you're not seeing any progression during growth. Growth is the most important time that we tend to see that progression as a child. In adults, it tends to be later on in life, around 40, 50 years of age, there tends to be an onset of scoliosis, and it's normally associated with pain, typically low back pain. Now, what do you do if you've been diagnosed, you've been no, uh, newly diagnosed with scoliosis and you don't know what to do? Well, first of all, my biggest recommendation is being proactive. There is no benefit in letting a curve worsen. I don't see any benefit in getting and say, even if you have a mild curve and say it's 20 degrees, why would you want your curve to become bigger before you would treat it? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I would say be proactive and reduce curves. Taking a 20 degree curve and reducing it to 20, I'm um, reducing it to 10, I'm sorry, has no negative effect to the body, right? That, that's just gonna make the spine more aligned. It's gonna take pressure off the nerve system. They can have a better life as a result of having a smaller curve. But letting a curve go from 20 to 30 or 40 will have negative effects to the body. It's more likely to cause pain, more likely to cause dysfunction, and you get closer to a surgical level, which obviously requires a very invasive uh, uh, surgical approach to try to deal with. So I always recommend be proactive is always the right thing to do. Research all your options. I mean, for sure, look at everything that's involved in the scoliosis and what you can do conservatively to reduce your curve and find doctors that that's what they do that they take care of scoliosis patients and they know what's involved. If you're considering that doctor as to be your doctor to manage your, your scoliosis, I will definitely recommend, let me see some pre and post results of what, of what that doctor achieved in treating their patients. You know, Always look for that and ask for that because if they can't show you pre and post results of, a, of scoliosis patients being reduced and getting positive outcomes, you may be their only scoliosis patient, which that's not, that's not the doctor for you, for sure. Because scoliosis is a definitely a different thing than just having a you know, misaligned spine or muscle pain or back pain, okay? So be proactive, research your options, and definitely find doctors that are trained to treat scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.